preach in chapter number 13. Revelation chapter number 13. How many has been having a good time in the book of Revelation? Amen. We're learning and growing and, and I tell you what, it's been a good time. Yes. We'll let these children out just a moment to get lined up over there and we'll jump right into it. Revelation. If you'll remember with me, the, the word revelation means the uncovering of. No, yes, yes, no cups, no drinks upstairs, please. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. All right. But anyways, revelation, it means the uncovering, apocalypse. So people believe that Revelation is a book, Brother Tim, that you can't understand. They believe it is a book that is hidden in mystery, and they believe it is a book that is uh, just so hard to understand. But once we break it down and we, we, we started studying this, we see that the book of Revelation is not hard to understand, but it's just symbolical. John, uh, he wrote in symbolism a lot, and here we find out uh, last week we began talking about the Antichrist. And does anybody remember what we said? That the word Antichrist is not found nowhere in the book of Revelation. Uh, the Antichrist is actually only mentioned by about four times in 1 John and two times in 2 John. He is the same writer that wrote the book of Revelation. But in the book of Revelation, the Antichrist is called the beast. And so... We found out last week, and I'm going to start reading. I know we got all the way down to verse number 10, but I want to read down here. Verse number 1 said, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns were ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous name. You remember with us what we said about that. He's not a man that's going to have seven heads and ten horns. Those seven heads and ten horns, this means he is a very powerful man. He is a very charismatic, will be a very charismatic speaker. And the ten crowns is actually ten kings that are going to join forces with the Antichrist and are going to give him power. In other words, there's going to be ten world leaders in this world at this time that, that are going to give all their power and their allegiance to this one man. And he is going to be risen up and, and everybody's going to be looking to this one guy who claims to have all the answers. And so that's what the seven heads and ten horns are. I'm not going to get too deep in it because it's, it's more later revealed in Revelation 17. And we'll talk more about it. But it just means he's going to be a very powerful man and he's going to have a lot of people, ten kings that's going to be with him. And on his head is a blasphemous name. Can anybody tell me what we said last week? The word Antichrist, what does it mean? Uh, opposite, of. opposite of or what? Instead of. Thank you, brother. Opposite of or instead of. Nine times out of ten, everybody says opposite of. But Antichrist is not just going to come and be opposite of. He's going to be instead of, in place of. When we talk about Antichrist, many people always think, well, anti-Jesus. So Jesus done great things, so the Antichrist is going to do a lot of evil things. Or Jesus healed a lot of people, so this guy's going to just kill a lot of people. Or, or just we always think the opposite of. But what the Bible breaks down and shares with us is actually quite different than that. Actually, the Antichrist is going to come in and people are, are going to be flocking to him. I'm talking about he's going to be good looking. He's going to be charismatic. He's going to have this. Everybody is going to look to this guy and say, wow, this is a world leader. He's going to rise up to be a dictator in this world. And we went over all this last week, so I'm not going to try to spend a lot of time there. But Antichrist not only means opposite of, it means instead of. Because the Bible teaches us that this guy is going to come saying, I'm Jesus. This guy is going to come saying, I am the Christ. Oh, I am this. And he's going to try to set himself in the temple of God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says he will set 
himself in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, demanding worship. Because Satan, ever since the beginning when he got kicked out of heaven, y'all remember we studied about this not just a few weeks ago. When Satan got kicked out of heaven, do y'all remember why the first time? Pride. He wanted to be worshipped. He wanted to be God. Actually, he wanted to be above God. And pride always comes before fall. And Lucifer, the son of the morning, he got kicked out of heaven and got kicked to the uh, out of heaven. See, he used to have a home there. He used to be the worship leader. He used to be the, the cherub that covered. He, he used to have a, a very important job to do, but he failed. He failed and got tossed out of heaven, kicked out of heaven. But the Bible goes on verse 2. I'm going to read this. I'm not going to preach on every verse because we went over all this. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet was like the feet of a bear. His mouth like the mouth of a lion. And, his, uh, and the dragon gave him power and his throne and great authority. Can anybody tell me who the dragon is? Right. Satan. That's right. The dragon is Satan. The beast out of the sea is the Antichrist. The dragon is Satan. And so the dragon gives him his power, his throne, and great authority. Verse number 3. But remember what we did say last week. Satan can't give you power and authority because he only has what God allows him to do. And Satan's only power that he has is what we give him. Oh. Huh. That's right. That's right. But, but what I'm saying is this right here. It is that too many people give the devil too much glory. Uh, they say the devil made me do this. Or the devil led me this way. Or the devil did this. The devil ain't made you do jack. Come on. The devil might have put something in front of you. But you made up your mind to step off in it. You see the devil don't make you do anything. You decide yourself what you are going to do. You are either going to live for God or you're going to live against God. One way or the other. But the devil don't make you do something. You decide. Oh, I feel the preach coming right there. The Bible said, Jeremiah, that it's we have to choose daily. Children of God, listen to me right here. You have went to your knees. You have asked God to save you and to line your life up with Him. But it's still, that's not the only time you've got to pray and talk to God. Every single day that you live, every day you better wake up and say, I choose this day, I'm going to serve my God. I'm going to follow Him. I'm going to do what God's Word said. I'm going to line my life up with the Word of God. Or if you don't, the enemy is going to be knocking at your mind. He's going to be knocking on your door and trying to lead you away from God. We are talking about Antichrist. You've got to understand something in the Bible. We, we read about Antichrist. I told you it's four times in 1 John, two times in 2 John. But only just a few times, maybe two, is the Antichrist mentioned. What are you saying, Brother Chad? I'm saying, let me read it to you. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 18. 1 John chapter 2, verse number 18. That's just a few pages back. Praise God. Let me read it to you and then I'll tell you what I'm talking about. 1 John 2, 18. Well, I can't get my page open. Stuck together. There it is. 1 John 2, 18. Are you there? It says, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist, capital A, is coming. Even now, many antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. So the Bible tells us that not only is there an antichrist, capital A, that is coming, but there have been many antichrists uh, that have already come. Lowercase a. What are you talking about, Brother Chad? I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. It is the spirit of antichrist. It is not the, there's only one Antichrist, capital A. But the spirit of Antichrist is already loose in this world. Let me tell you what happened 
when John was writing this, this epistle, when he was writing this letter. There was a man who was a leader in Rome. His name was Nero. Nero was so evil that he would take the Christians and he would put them in tar and he would strap them to the wall of his garden and he would light them on fire just because they named the name of Jesus Christ. He did not like Jesus because he thought he was to be worse. He thought he was God. So he put himself, the Bible said, any man that denies that Jesus is the Christ and that Jesus is the Son of God is Antichrist. That means they have the spirit of Antichrist in them. Now, let me tell you something. We, we was talking about this just a while ago, that, that uh, you better be careful who you find yourself running with. You better be very careful who you find yourself associating with. Brother Chad, I thought we're to love everybody. We are to love everybody, but you better discern the spirit. You better have God uh, to pray to God that he gives you the spirit of discernment. Because if you walk with somebody long enough, yeah, it's going to rub off. If you walk with somebody long enough, it begins to come and it begins to take hold in your life. Listen to me. I have seen many children of God that have been on fire for the Lord, but they get to running around with somebody that's always depressed and somebody that's always down and out. And before long, that happy, on fire, once loving child of God is now all the time down in the dumps and depressed and, and this, you can't tolerate being around them for long because you'll be depressed. Why? Because the spirit of depression that is on them and in them and attached to them is now a trying to attach itself to you. The spirit of Antichrist. There's many different spirits in this world. That's why the Bible said, even you as children of God, when you come and hear preaching and hear the word of God, it says to what? To, to beat us to discern, to try the spirits. Are you hearing me? To try the spirits to make sure that it is of God. That means that even in the house of God, there's many spirits that are moving. Of course, we only name the Holy Spirit. We only want the Holy Spirit here. But there is just as many evil spirits that comes in as the Holy Spirit does. Let me tell you something. The devil comes to church more than you do. The devil shows up and is more faithful than a lot of us are. Why? Because he wants to destroy what God has built. The devil wants to tear down what God has raised up. I don't know about you, but I refuse to allow that devil to have his way that we will not let the enemy tear down what God has built that's why right here we're seeing it every time we turn around. The devil can't stand that people are coming in, that they're filling the house up, they're getting saved, they're getting healed, they're getting delivered, and therefore we're going to see attacks and attacks and attacks like never before. Get ready, child of God. If you're not fighting, you might want to check yourself because the devil is out to do what? Kill steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. Christ comes to give life, but the enemy comes to steal. There's spirits. I'll get you in just one second, my brother. There's spirits all around you and I every day. Every day. I wish we could remember back in the Old Testament to the prophet Elisha. Elisha and his servant were in this home. And they were actually going somewhere. But, but the, the army up the road wanted to capture them and carry them to jail. They wanted to carry them before the king. You see, Elisha was a man of God. And, and the servant of Elisha, he, he wasn't really close to God, but he had been hearing about God due to Elisha telling him. Woo, you're getting quiet. I said, this servant had been hearing about God because Elisha, he was a good Christian. He, he told everybody that he got around about how good God was. 
If people is around you and they ain't hearing God come out your mouth, there's a problem. A big problem. Because God should be your number one focus everywhere you go. Not just in the house of God. When you wake up in the morning, the first thing that will pop on your mind is, Hello, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the day you give me. Thank you, God, for waking me up today. Thank you, Lord, that I'm able to roll out of this bed and put my clothes on and get up and go to work. That I'm able, God, I have a roof over my head. I have food in my kitchen. I have shoes on my feet. My God, you have blessed me. You have been so good to me. You know, that should be the first thing that we think of is, God, when we're out with our friends, we should say, God, thank you that I have true friends that I can count on. Because there's nothing like Christian brothers and sisters. Brother Dave, I used to think I had friends back before I knew God. I did. I thought I had a bunch of them. And I had a lot of people like that said they were my friends. But let me tell you what happened. When they found out that I got the Holy Ghost and I got Jesus living on the inside of me, all those so-called friends went pie. We don't want to talk to him. He's crazy. I'm talking about there's some of them that we used to hang out every day, every weekend. We was always running and always doing. But when I started the church, I hadn't heard from them ever since. That's right, that's right, because the light exposes the darkness. But I'm telling you what I found out, my brother. I found this out, that when I lost those so-called friends while well, coming to the house of the Lord, not only did I gain friends, I gained something better. I gained family. I gained blood family. I got blood family here, but I got more blood family in this room because we have royal blood flowing through your veins. I've got it flowing through my veins. The Bible said that when you get saved, God regenerates you. That means you don't have your old daddy's genes. When I was at my father, the devil, I had his genes. I had his DNA. But when God saved me, he pulled and gave me that, that stony heart and he put in a heart of flesh and he changed my very being. Are you hearing me? The Bible said any man that is in Christ is a new creature. The old things have been passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're not who you used to be anymore. Woo! And the Spirit. That's right. You have no desire to be. And the Spirit spirit of antichrist or the spirit from hell wants to attach to you and try to pull you down and get your mind unfocused and unclear and get you thinking bad about this and about that and if the devil can get you down and depressed what is that old saying out of minds is the devil's workshop that's where the devil loves to come in he loves to come in and, and he loves to put things in front of you and, and put thoughts in your head. And, and he loves to destroy. But if you submerge yourself in that right there, yes, sir. No That's it. That's it. Absolutely. That's it. You submerge yourself in the Word of God and don't give place to the enemy. If you give the devil one inch, he'll take ten miles. But I'm telling you, I, I hire people, uh, I'm telling you all the time that they're in chaos and they're panicking because of the stages of this world right now. And they say, Brother Chad, you need to get your head out of the sand. And I say, I don't have my head in the sand. I have it in the Word of God. And I know more than you do. I know more than tomorrow's newspaper because I know. Hallelujah, they're my Jesus. Uh, praise God. As long as we're on that team, uh, we're going to be all right. We're going to win, praise the Lord. Uh, there's nothing that can come and take place that God's Word hadn't already told us about. Tomorrow's newspaper, guess what? It was written long ago. <laughs> it was written way long ago in a different language. Uh, English wouldn't even know we're around then. Uh, but God told us what it was going to be. He told us how this world was going to be. Go ahead, brother. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to bring a point up when he, he said, try the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That a lot of young Christians might not understand. Well, what do you mean, try the Spirit? Yes. Uh, if you go back to Christ's teaching in Mark 13, Matthew 24, uh -huh. Christ said, now learn a parable of the fig tree. Yes. Okay, so if we go back to Jeremiah, we find out that there were good figs and, bad and figs. vile figs. Yes. 
In other words, we got to test not what someone says, but what fruit does what their fruit are they bear? Sayings yeah. bring absolutely, to the church. absolutely. Does it bring to our being? Yes. Does it lift us up and right. edify each other, or yes. does it tear somebody else down? Yes. To lift ourselves up. That's right. So we got we try the spirit is the fruit. Uh huh. What the spirit brings to life? Yes. To to this life. Yes. Uh, concerning the good and the bad things. Yes. That's what we're studying here. That's we're it. talking about the five things yes. and the good things. That's God's it. God's showing us. The good shepherd and the evil shepherd. Jesus yes. Christ didn't say, well, if you get around to it, learn the parable of right. the tree. He said, learn, learn the parable. Yes. That's, That's it. what he meant. He's trying to help us out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mark 13, the wheat and the tares. It's all happening right now, right before our very eyes. Yes, ma'am. I don't know. It starts with a J, but I'm not sure what book in the Bible it is. But there was a thing that I've seen today, and it says something about um, somebody's, a man's hip was healed by the, because his friend had faith. Yes, yes. I don't remember what it was, uh -huh. but that kind of goes back to what you were talking about. Yes. Be careful who, you know, watch who you're with. Because yes, yes. You can, you can, just like you can be healed right. by your friend's faith, uh -huh. you can also be torn down. That's it. That's it. Depending on who you are around is depending upon what kind of life you're going to live. That's right. We preach this to our children all the time. Who you run with, how many knows the whole saying? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Where I'm going with that? I don't even have to go no further. Well, I tell you what, if you, will, if you hang around six millionaires, uh -huh. you'll be the seven. That's it. But if you hang around six junkies, long yeah. enough, you're going to be the same. That's it. That's it. That's life. That's life. But this is what I've learned. I can run around with people that is going to that is going to subtract from my spirituality. I can run around with people that is going to pull from me and, and not replenish. Right. What are you saying, Brother Ted? I'm saying there's people out there that wants to pull you down right. and they don't want to lift you up. Right. But the Bible says that you and I are to edify and exhort one another. Yeah. That is to build one another up. That is to lift one another up. That is to encourage one another. And so, Hebrews 10, 25 says, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day of the Lord. Amen. The day of the Lord. Yes. It's coming. Praise God. It's coming. And let me tell you something. The more we see it coming to pass, the more we need to build up one another. Amen. You can run around with people that are saved and on fire for God. And just like my sister said a moment ago, the, the Bible is full of stories where somebody said, we got to get our friend to Jesus. we got to get our friend to Jesus. And, and what, what does that have to do with today, Brother Chad? Well, I'm glad you asked because the same way they would carry people to Jesus is now if you've got a true brother and sister in Christ and they see you're in need, they're going to carry you to Jesus. They may not pick you up off of your feet and touch you uh, to the presence of the Lord, but they will carry you to Jesus by the prayers that they pray. Uh, they're carrying you before the throne room and you don't even know it. Uh, but therefore, uh, because somebody's praying for you, uh, you are in the mind of God right then and God will show up for you. That's what I'm talking about. It's important to know who you're running with. Either you're running with somebody that's carrying you to Jesus or you're running with somebody that's pulling you away from Him. Right. Test the spirits to make sure that they are of God because the spirit of Antichrist is already at work in this world. Trey, yes, sir. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's it, brother. So many. So many that that likes, and I heard somebody say it a moment ago that likes to tear somebody down, but it, at the same time it's making their self, or they think it makes their self look better. But I got news for you: if you're having to tear somebody down to make yourself look better, you're not making yourself look better. Not at all. Not at all. You'll never. There you go. That's right. You'll hear the words depart from me. That's right. I never knew you. Yes, sir. My grandma used to tell us boys that if you run with a dog, please. 
Huh? You're going to get fleas too. That's right, brother. That's it. There you go. I ain't never heard it put that way, but that's it. That's a good analogy. You run with a dog with fleas, you're going to get fleas. Common sense, plain and simple. There you go. There you go. That's it, brother. That's it. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thing is, the church is okay. You take one small stick, uh -huh. and you break it easy, but you put a whole bunch of sticks together. Yes. And you try to break it, you're not going to. Mm. That's, that's, right. that's that's the church. That's, that's the power of unity. Exactly. That's the power one mind, of one, one mind and one accord. Exactly. When a church body comes together as one, you cannot. You will blow the roof off of it. Oh my goodness! I'm telling you right now. You get in one mind and one accord in one place. What happened in Acts chapter two? Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. It wasn't a cool, gentle summer breeze. It was a mighty rushing wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting. Why? Because they were in one mind, one accord, in one place with one thing on their mind. That was Jesus. What Jesus promised us. And what did Jesus promise the church today? He said, the former rain shall be greater than that, or the latter rain shall be greater than that of the former. He also said that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Somebody needs to prophesy that over your children. God said, my son and my daughter is going to prophesy. My old man is going to dream dreams and my young man is going to have visions. And upon your handmaids and your servants, they will prophesy. I'm ready to see this world and this county get turned around and on fire for God instead of hearing about heroin overdoses. I'm ready to hear about some people standing up and prophesying and saying this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. What I'm talking about, they need to get the Spirit of God on the inside and not the Spirit of Antichrist that's dragging them down. Yes, sir, young man. Okay, so I would like to say... Some of the parents in here make them relate to telling their children this. Uh -huh. But I've always heard the saying throughout my life, run with the wrong crowd, you're going to end up in the wrong place on the wrong night. Yeah, that's it, buddy. And, and I started watching my friends' behavior, and if they act shady, I just that's don't it. be around them. There you go. Well, it's like Brother Dave was saying over here a minute ago, you can tell by the fruit that people bear. That's right. you, you know, the Bible says, or people says, judge not. And the Bible tells us, judge not, lest you be judged with the same judgment that you judge, you shall also be judged. But the Bible also says, judge righteous judgment. What does that mean? Use your brain. You, yeah, use your brain. Use the law of God. The law of God. That's it. You take this word right here. And if somebody's life is not lining up with this word right here, then you can tell the fruit that they bear that they're not in the center of God's will. They stepped out of the will. Oh, I'm feeling something right here right now, McKenzie. Hallelujah. Because there's something that people got to understand in here right now. You can be anointed, but you can be outside of God's will. Come on. Amen. Woo. Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that cries, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of God. I'm talking about we got anointed praise team. We've got some anointed singers. We've got some anointed stuff going on. But don't get it twisted, church. There's people living under a bridge that is homeless and has nothing that can sing somebody up from the dead because the anointing of God is so strong in their life. But guess what? They may be out of the center of God's will. God's anointing. He gives it, and God said, my calls or my gifts are irrevocable and without repentance. That means once God gives you a gift and anointing, he don't take that away from you. Right. You're still anointed, yeah. but you're out of God's will. Yeah. Woo. Amen. Man, I, I'm talking about, praise God. Oh, man. Let me, look, I got to get back in the Bible. Let it you got to follow God. You gotta follow God. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, and, 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 and the statement by Acts two. Uh huh. I just feel in my spirit they were in one place, uh -huh. in one mind, and one accord. Yes, sir. When you when you get the elements of God's 
center of his universe yes. inside of a church. Yes. And you become so united that I know what you're going to say before you before say you even it, say it. Concerning God's word. Yes. God demonstrated in Acts 2. Yes. Which is going to happen again, by yes. the way. That's right. Us. Yes. But, but the Spirit demonstrated to the church at that time that I can cause you uh -huh. to sit in heavenly places. Uh, yeah, that's what his word said, yes. The Father's table and cause you to say what the Father has on his mind. Yes, that's right. yes. That God can cause this to happen. Yes. And when we get all the elements in the right alignment at the yes. right time, and you've seen it yourself, everybody yes. in here has seen it. Yes. That when the Spirit of God moves in you, it yes. really has nothing to do with us. Right. It's when God says you do this, uh -huh. then you'll say the Lord. Yes. God said my word won't go out for it. That's it's right. That's accomplished what I send it to me. Yes. Yes. And I know everybody in here has a testimony. Yes. The word they witness to someone or someone witness to them. Yes. And then it causes a change of mind. Absolutely. Which causes repentance. Yes. It's a good thing. That's a good thing. Do you want to about it? That's it, brother. That's it. Praise God. That's it. And I'm telling you, what we're talking about right now, if you have never experienced the beauty of being in one mind and one accord, I'm talking about if you ever, ever experience it one time, there's no words that we can sit here and describe it to you. The power and majesty of Almighty God when it fills the room. We're like the children of Israel that is looking at the mountain that is on fire and burning for God. And a voice from heaven shows up. Woo! I'm talking about God. When people truly come together in one place, one mind, and one accord, God can move and will move. This is what I've got to say. Yes, ma'am. Breathe on us, Lord. There you go. Breathe on us, Lord. That's it. That's it. That's it, sis. That's it. Oh, my goodness. I remember reading several places where the Bible says, and Jesus breathed on them. Yes. The word breath from heaven is ruach. Yes. I'm talking about that is the literal breath of God. And that's what Acts 2 is talking about. It, the wind, the mighty rushing wind. It wasn't just something that come from the trees outside. It was the breath of God from heaven that entered into the place. Heaven met earth with a sloppy wet kiss. And I'm talking about the disciples, the apostles, and the 120 ran outside. Hallelujah. Speaking in every tongue, every nation, every tribe that was there, even their own dialect, they knew exactly what they were saying saying, but guess what? They were preaching the gospel and they didn't even know how they were doing it. Well, and somebody that's it, a sweet savior. That's it, see if that is it. Yes. People that I'm telling people don't understand how beautiful this is. How beautiful because there was folks that was there in that crowd. They looked and they said, These men are drunk. <laughs> And who was it that stood up? I believe it was St. Peter. Now he stood up. I, I hope this chair is just 260 pound proof. Peter stood up and he said, look at us. These men are not drunk as you suppose seeing it is, but the ninth hour. But this is that. That was prophesied by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. What was he saying? He was saying this isn't Bud Light. This isn't Jack Daniels. This ain't a pill bottle. This ain't a crack pot. But this is that that was prophesied by the prophet Joel. They are not drunk. They are not high. Well, they are high. Well, the most high. But there, I'm talking about, Peter said, you've got to understand what's going on here. Because these people, and that's another thing. I'll, I'll get back to that. Yeah. That's another thing. Is people always want to tear apart God's work. Yes. Always want to tear apart God's work. Yes. And, and then they want to build up what the devil's doing. Yeah. And they want to lift up the, the wrong spirit. Yeah. Right now, this world that we're living in is lifting up the spirit of Antichrist. You want to know why they're doing it? Because the church is not lifting up the real Christ. I'm talking about the church has been quiet and has quit preaching Jesus Christ.
Christ and they have begun just going along being comfortable, complacent with where they're at. We become stagnant and cold uh, and the church is not a hot burning fire anymore. It's a barely burning kindle of a flame. There you go. They want to get more people to come. But I'm telling you, I have seen with my own two eyes this little country church has been full several times and it, it continues to amaze me. But the only thing that we're doing, we're not trying to preach what feels good. We're giving you what God's Word says. And I have seen with my own two eyes that if you will just lift up Jesus, He'll do the rest. He will send them in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. You just give them Jesus and He does the rest. I don't save them, you don't save them, but we give them God's word and God saves them. He so, because in the last day he says that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. You can't come to God unless the spirit of God draws you. And so that tells me something, Brother Patrick, that people when they show up on Sundays or on Wednesdays, they didn't come here on their own free will and accord, or they might have come on their own free will, but it wasn't them that decided they were coming here. There was a day long ago Amen. that God knew that you were going to be here and the Spirit has called you here just like Mordecai told Esther for such a time as the... I believe I'm in a room full of last day's believers that God has chose you for such a time as this. We know it is the last hour because the Spirit of Antichrist is all in this world. And if we, listen, this is, the, this is the way I feel it in my spirit. This is the way I feel the Lord has given it to me in times past. I preach the same thing right here. Is that God had enough faith in you. God had enough faith in you to put you in the last day's generation. What are you saying, Brother Chad? I'm telling you the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Jeremiah that lived 4,000, 5,000 years ago, they longed to see the day of the Lord. They longed to see things that are taking place right now. But God needed them in that time. But you were chosen for such a time as this. And we have got to stand. The Bible said when you've done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins girt about with truth and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and putting on the helmet of salvation and picking up the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Lord. What, what are you saying, Brother Chad? I'm telling you, we got to put our armor on and go to battle. The devil, the spirit of Antichrist is at work in this world and we're sitting back, leaving our swords, laying in the car or wherever, the last place we left it. The last place we left it. And yet we think we're going to fight and win when the devil comes at us. If I can recall correctly, Jesus, when the enemy come at him, Jesus knew the word. He was the word. So I guess that was pretty simple. But Jesus knew the word so well. And we, you and I, we're not to model our lives after the preacher. We're to model our lives after Jesus. We're not to model after an evangelist. We're to model our lives after Jesus. And that's the only one. And so Jesus fought the devil not in the arm of flesh. In the Old Testament prophet, he said, It's not by power and it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. That means we're not to fight the enemy in the arm of flesh. It's not by power. I don't care if you've been saved for 500 years. I don't guess that's possible, is it? Let me think that over. Yeah. Your car don't run on fumes and it don't run when it's empty, but if you put this right here, that's it. That's right. You're filling it up. There you go. You're filling up. You're geared up. You're fueled up. And that's what Jesus did. He had the word on the inside, 
that any time the devil tried to come at him, he looked that devil square in the eye and he would say, it is written, Satan. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And he began to just tell him like it was. And he told him, devil, you are no match for the word of Almighty God. You see, this word is forever settled in heaven. This word is concrete. This word, it will never, the Bible said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never, it will never pass away. I'm talking about when you see this world done away with and the paradise come back in this earth the way it was when God created it. The Word of God will still remain. The Word of God will still remain. There's nothing that the devil or anybody can do to get rid. They've been trying to hide this Word. They've been trying to burn this Word for many, many, many thousands of years. But it has not come to pass. And it will not come to pass. Why? Because God's word said so. Do y'all remember wrestling? Stone Cold said so. Well, I got news for you. Jesus is stronger than Stone Cold. 316, take that. Amen. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Yes, ma'am. The book of Eli? The last Bible that was printed in Braille. Uh-huh. Yes. And these people were to get the Bible. Well, they got it. Yes. And the shop, it, but it never stopped him to get into the place where they was. He had the Bible memorized. Yeah, there you go. And he read it to them. And they that's right. Yeah. See, and, and that's, that's, that's directly it. I've not watched that movie. I'd like to it's see that, though. It is? Yeah. I'd like to watch that. But uh, <laughs> our Uncle Vernal sides, he was a minister in the church got a prophecy for 40 something 50 something years but he always told us he said son there's going to come a day when these books when the word where you probably won't be able to get it anymore when you probably won't be able to buy it because the government's outlawed it we don't know how close we are right now to losing our religious liberties we don't know why because the spirit of antichrist is at work in this world already we don't know. And that's why the book of Timothy says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Why are you not to be ashamed? Because if the devil comes to me and I don't know God's word, I'm ashamed of myself. Because I'm a child of God. I ought to know the love letter that my... Mm. I ought to know. As soon as he got the last verse out, remember the Bible died. Yes. They rewrote it. Uh -huh. it was, it's a very good movie. As soon as he read the last word, yes. he died. He died. The there you go. See, that was his mission on earth. That was his, and I know. He didn't know which way to go. Yes. God was leaving the whole way, showing him where to go. Yes. Wow. Denzel Washington was Eli's. Uh huh. Wow. That's it. That's it. But I'm telling you, we ought to know this word right here. Yes, sir. By what you said, you need to know. Uh huh. The words. You know how Shannon made them shirts and stuff. I'm a living example of this. I went to lunch one day. Yes. Uh huh. Hey, boy. He, as far as I know, he ain't no Christian. Uh huh. Had a Bible scripture on the back. Yes. He walked up to me and said, What's back in the shirt, say? Uh huh. He yeah. said, you being a Christian, you need to know all of it. That's right. That's it. And that's right there. That's it. it. You feel. Exactly. Exactly. You need to be a word that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. You need to be so in tune. Let me tell you something. You know how when a man meets a woman and a woman meets a man, how they're pretty much and they're in love, they're inseparable. And then they get married, and then it's the other way. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> no, I'm playing. I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. I'm only half, half serious. 
Yeah, we'll tie it down on you, you? But y'all know how when a man and a woman, they, they fall in love and they're inseparable. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the guy won't let you sit down unless he opens the, or unless he pulls out a chair. He won't let you go through a door unless he opens it up for you. He, he won't let you walk on the wrong side of traffic. He's going to walk on that side. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about that's the way that every child of God ought to be with this word right here. You ought to be so attached to this. This is your love letter from your groom that one day he's coming back for a bride that has made herself ready. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about you. He, the groom is not here right now, but his love letter to you is. Uh, and he's coming back for a bridegroom or for a bride that has made herself ready. Praise God. And I don't know about you, but I want to know everything that there is to know about my groom. I want to know everything because I want to get to that marriage supper of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. And I want a honeymoon with my Jesus. Woo. I want to know everything. And I want to be inseparable with this word right here. Better yet, David said these words, I will hide your words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Lord, let your word be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What are you saying? I'm saying when you begin to put that word in, sister, don't sometimes we may not understand it when we read it. But it will lead you. It will guide you. And it will come to fruition whenever you need it. God's word will go ding, 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 ding. That's, that's right. I remember exactly what it said. Now I know what that meant. Now I know because the Spirit, once it's inside of here, the Spirit will quicken you. And when it's time, the Spirit will speak expressly through you. Woo, hallelujah to God. So try the spirits to make sure they are of God. Don't just go holding hands with somebody that you don't know who they are because that will attach to you. Get quiet. Because it's good. That's it. It will attach. Huh? That's why you need to know the word so you can distinguish between the beast and the true God. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's that's the thing. We need to know the difference between the genuine Christ and the imitator Christ. Woo. Let me just go ahead and tell y'all something. And I've always said this. To save the hassle from determining what you believe about the last days, let me tell you this. If there's somebody comes and stands in front of you and tells you they are Christ and you can still pinch yourself and it still hurts, it ain't real. Because when Christ shows up, the Bible said in a moment, a twinkle of an eye, we shall all be changed to be made to be like Him. This body hits the ground, praise God, and our spiritual body steps out. Woo! There we are gathered together with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So if somebody says, I'm Christ, and you still in this flesh, yeah, hit them in the mouth and run. Say, Lord, you said turn the other cheek. You didn't say which one. That's it, brother. Yes, yes, that's it. That's it, absolutely. Lay so many people believe so many different ways. Brother, I saved the hassle and just put it this way. If Jesus comes, you're going to be changed and drawn to him. If an antichrist comes, this is what's going to happen. He's going to claim he's the Christ. And if you know God's word, you know he's not. He's an imposter. He's an imposter. He's an imposter. He's an imposter. Christ gets here, we'll already yes, that's it. That's it, brother. But to save the hassle from everybody trying to figure this thing all out, this is what I'm talking about. Because many people have come. Mussolini, Napoleon, Hitler, the Jewish people. What's the name? Joseph Stallion. Jim Jones. Joseph Stallion. <laughs> Killed 30 million of his own people. How evil. He had the spirit of Antichrist. It's evil. Yes. Hitler, the Jewish people in the 1930s and 40s, the Jewish people thought he is Antichrist. Millions of Jewish people was led to the gas chamber and murdered. 
Remember, the dragon wants to attack the woman, wants to attack the sea line, Ooh, the nation of Israel. He wants to get rid of it. So what I'm telling you is, is there's many people, there's many people that has come and claimed they are the Christ. Nero, Mussolini, Joseph Stallion, Mayo, many different people. Jim Jones, what was that other guy? David Koresh in, in Texas out there. Waco, Texas. What's that that's in jail now that still operates? The I don't know. But you see, the Bible said that if it were possible that even the very elect would be deceived. If it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived. What are we talking about, Brother Chad? I'm telling you, you need to be so in tune with this word that you know who your father is. John chapter 10 says, My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're going to get some cordless mics down here. Get you one of them you wear on your head. That yeah. You don't know oh, I got one, but I, it goes flying, brother. I can't wear them. I, I, I tried that up there. They go flying everywhere. Oh, man. I tried that too. It didn't work either. It went. <laughs> I was trying to preach and I couldn't preach because that pen was going. <laughs> so I just went to the cordless mic and then Brother Mike, he said, I don't like it. I'm afraid you're going to throw it at me. <laughs> you get excited. I said, I'm going to hold on to it, brother. Praise God. I'm going to hold on to it. But the Bible said, let me get back into this. And the dragon gave him power, his throne, and great authority. Remember what we said, the devil don't have power unless you give it to him. And he can only do what God allows him to do. Everybody following us? Then the Bible says, I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world marveled and followed the beast. We'll talk about that more here in a little bit. So they worship the dragon who gave authority to the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Who is the beast? Antichrist. Antichrist. <laughs> Satan is the dragon. There you go. Where are you at, sis? You're freezing? Oh, man. Y'all know where the thing is. I can't reach it right now. Amen. So they worship the dragon who is who? Satan. Satan who gave authority to the beast who is who? Antichrist. Saying who is like the beast who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and he was given authority to continue 42 months. So who is like the beast? The whole world is saying who is like the beast? And you and I have the answer. Right here, right now, you and I know the answer. If I ask you who is like the beast, who are you going to say? Come on now, church of God, are you saved or not? Do you know who is the Father? Do you know who is above everybody? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Who is like the beast? Who can make war with the beast? Jesus. Huh? Yeah, there is no way. That's right. The Bible says. I know. I know. That's right. That's right. I'm not associating with him, sis. Don't get me wrong. I'm meaning who is able to make war. That's what these people, the world is going to be hollering in. They're drumming up their boy there. That's right. They're going to make him look, and he's going to act like he's Christ. And so the whole world is going to wander after him. But who is able to overcome him? That be Jesus. Maybe I'll give you a trick question. I hope so. I was wondering, I'm like, man, church, we know who we come here for, don't we? Amen. But listen, this is the thing. Who is able to make war with the beast? Jesus. The Bible says that when Christ comes back, Revelation chapter number 19, that when Christ comes back riding on a white horse with that sash king of kings and lord of lords, that Christ is going to open up his mouth and a sharp two-edged sword is going to come out and it's going to go forth conquering and to conquer. Oh, praise God, I'm talking about every evil is going to be done away with Amen. in a moment, in a moment's time when Christ comes riding in. There will be no war. It will be done, but we'll be riding with Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. We'll be riding with him. And the Bible said 
So they worshiped dragon. Let me go down. He was giving them out, speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. So let me tell you something. Who gives him the authority to do that? God. God. The devil is on a time clock. He only has the time that God allows him to have in this world. And God said, you got 42 months. How many, how many knows how long that is? Three and a half years. Awesome. What is a time, time, and half the times? Three and a half years. There you go, brother. That's it. That's it. That's right. 1,260 days. That's right. Three and a half years. It's good to be associated with this because in biblical prophecy, you're going to realize that all this, the numbers are important. Very, very important. Very important. And so the Bible said he opened up his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme in his name is tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. Why? Because he knows he lost a battle and he's lost us. And it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, we went over all of that last week. So I told you all I wasn't going to go through that again. But we did, didn't we? You missed it last week? Well, yeah, you got just a little glimpse of it. Woo. Yes, sir. I would like to say by no means do I call myself a saint, but I do call myself a follower. Right. Follower of Jesus. Right. There you go. There you go. That's it. Well, what God's done for you has made you a saint, little buddy. It's not your righteousness, but his righteousness is imputed right. to you. Ain't none of us worthy, but because of him, you are. Because of him, I am. We all are. Praise God. Now, I'm going to try to get in this. My watch is slow. Somebody tell me what time it is. 8.36. 8.36. My goodness, it's already closing time. Well, God ain't got no time peace. God ain't got no time peace, does he? I know some of you got to go home and go to bed, but that's all right. Just bear with me. Verse number 11. Then I saw another beast coming up. Because i got to get this out. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. Now, who is the dragon? The devil. Who is the beast out of the sea? The Antichrist. Does anybody know what the sea means? Nations. People. Let me read it to you. Revelation 17. It says, And he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The sea is representative of people, Multitude, nations, and tongues. It's not talking about down at the beach coming out of the ocean. He's talking about he's coming out of the nations. We don't went through that. Now, then I saw, verse 11, another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. Can anybody tell me who this is? The, the Antichrist prophet. The Antichrist prophet. There you go, the false prophet. Now, we told you that Antichrist meant instead of, opposite of, instead of. And so we find out that now the Antichrist, Satan, has now copied God yet again. What are you saying, Brother Chad? Well, the dragon is anti-father. The beast, the Antichrist, is anti-Christ. And then the false prophet who we're fixing to learn who he is, is the anti-Holy Spirit. So therefore, he makes up the unholy trinity. Yes. Satan is not a creator. Satan can't create anything. He can only imitate what God does. Satan has copied God from the very beginning. Amen. Yes. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. <coughs> Excuse me. So right here, he has two horns. We found out that the Antichrist has seven heads of ten horns and that represented authority, power, ten kings in the earth. But this one only has two horns. This may, well, this may because of lambs. This is going to get real deep real quick. 
That's right. Let's get real deep real quick. Lambs, they have two horns. So it could be that it's coming in looking like a lamb. Deception. This could be some famous preacher. This could be some famous pope. This could be... Hold on one minute, buddy. This could be somebody right now, what we're talking about, two horns. I'll get you in a minute. Two horns could be that he has religious background and political affiliations. This is where we're going. He could have religious affiliation and political affiliation. Meaning, he's going to have power in the political ring and in the religious ring. Now, this is still the, the false prophet. This is the false prophet we're talking about. And he's actually the one that's going to try to draw and compel men. To that's right. The that's it. He's going to be the one that's going to try to, he's going to point everybody. This is the final act of man's wickedness. That's it. That's it. That's the final act of man's wickedness. And you will find out if you take the mark, any person that takes the mark, in chapter 14, the Bible said the angels preach. Angels have never preached a day in this earth. They have been sent as messengers, but they've never preached. But in Revelation chapter 14, angels come and preach it in this earth. They're going to be above the earth and now have a voice that the whole world shall hear. You'll see it. But I'm talking about and the Bible says right here, I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He is going to be somebody that is going to, that's going to look good and draw people. <coughs> what does the devil do? He disguises himself as an angel of light. That's right. He comes in like a lamb, but he's actually like a wolf. That's right. Go ahead, little buddy. I was going to say he's a mirage for himself. He tries to show up as something good, but really... That's right. Exactly. Exactly right. That's it. That's exactly right. He hides who he truly is. He hides who he truly is. Until he gets people. Because he knows nobody will fall for it if he shows up as himself. There you go. There you go. There you go. And the Bible said he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. And he causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Church, I don't have time tonight to go into that verse right there, so I'm going to end it right there tonight. Next week, we'll have to go into the rest of this because we can get on down in here into the mark of the beast, and we go in here to the deadly wound being healed. There's so much to talk about. It will take us two hours right now just to go with this one verse. So I don't want to hold you here no longer. But... 13, he performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. See, that, that confuses me right there. Yes. But I guess it's like, I mean, he can, you know, the sorcerers and stuff can make things happen. Yes, yes. You know, Witchcraft, sorcerers. The yes. Second Thessalonians. Right, right. See, the only one that can do that is God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 said that the Antichrist will deceive men with false signs and lying wonders. And we're going to find out how they, they make an image of the Antichrist. And it actually, the Bible says that it appears to speak and see. I believe it's actually what it is to or both speak. It, the beast uh, should both speak. Well, it's something else. Oh, give breath to and speak. That's something that's going to take more to go into. Satan cannot do miracles like God does. But he deceives people and it makes it look like like this beast right here. Who knows that it's going to look like it speaks and breathes. But we know the Bible says in Psalms 136 and all through the Bible that these idols have eyes to see but they can't see. They have mouths to speak but they can't speak. They're, they're dead. They're lifeless. Only God can create life. But brother... Randall, we went to. Kind of yeah, know. it's going to be lying signs, deceiving wonders. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, do you remember in the book of uh, Exodus 
God told him, he said, I want you to go and throw down your staff. And when you throw your staff down, and all the sorcerers, they threw theirs down, and they became a serpent. But Aaron's eat up all theirs. Yeah, I mean, witchcraft, there, there's, there's stuff that goes on. But only God can do, you know what I'm saying? The miraculous. Theirs is all deceptive. It's magic. That's right. God does miracles. Satan does magic. Deception, and we'll go more into that next week, a lot more. I just don't want to uh, get started because I won't want to shut up. No, that's fine. You, I mean, yes, sir. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yes. Um, let me find this one verse, and I'll close. Tonight. Second Thessalonians two. Second Thessalonians. Ah, do, 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 do. Praise the Lord. I'm almost there, brother. The coming of the lawless one. There it is. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. There's going to be deception and lying wonders. Many different things is going to take place. This guy says he has a deadly wound. I can't get off into that tonight. But anyway, we'll get on it next week. I promise you. If you want to talk about this week, call me because I'm just busting to say something. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Praise God. You got something, brother? Yeah, I'm just going to say uh, this this uh, lamb that with the two horns. Uh huh. He has the voice of the dragon. Uh huh. So that that ought to cue us in right away that this this is not a good no spirit that he's playing for. No, but exactly. But, but what is so important about uh, us studying and trying to uh, be approved in the Word of God? In other words, prove the Word of God. To yes. Within our own self. Yes. That it is Word of God. That uh that this false one that's going to show up, uh -huh. he's going to have a religion. He's going to have a message that sounds so religious. Oh, yes, and yes. it's going to sound so right. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make you just want to get up and shout and yes. sing. Yes. And that the world, the reason the world wonders after this is because nobody's ever told them who Christ is, who yes. God is. That's it. So they, they don't have a clue. Exactly. So they, these countries that have never that are uh, communists or have never acknowledged any God, uh -huh. all of a sudden this guy is going to show up or this entity, yes. and the whole world is going to think, wow, there is a God. Yes. But see, it's going to be the false God. Right. They're going to be deceived. Yes. But for the elect's sake, God yes. said, I'll show them no God. That's it. Praise the Lord. Go back about two, two chapters or one chapter in this. And he'll, you can find out that God shortened the day of the locust yes. five months. Yes. He said, you, can, you know, you, you So he's limited. Yes. He has a time limit. He's, yes. got, he's got a leash on him. That's it. He can't get past what God told him. That's it. That's it. When God's time comes, praise the Lord, that's it. That's, right. that's it. Brother yes. That's it, brother. Absolutely. You know, and that's, I think it was me and you talking on the way home from work today, and uh, that's that's what we were talking about. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, there'll be many that will come in my name saying, I am Christ, but do lie. See that you be not deceived. Church, I'm going to tell you something. Pray, that's right, and make sure that you are not deceived. Best way to do that, stay in this word. Stay in his word. Stay close to God. And he's going to take you home. Right. He's going to take you home. Praise God. I can't wait either to see this. <laughs> oh, I can't wait either. Praise God. All right. Is there any more questions, comments, input? Uh, yes, sir. I was reading something. Um, I would like to share with the church. It's about... Uh, <laughs> 